If you're learning how to improvise on the piano, then you've probably found that it can feel really frustrating and really difficult. So what I'm gonna to do today is try to make your life a little bit easier by showing you something important about the way piano improvisation works. What I'm gonna do is improvise my way through a jazz chord progression. If you wanna try it for yourself, you'll find the chords in the description text right underneath the video. Now, as I play, I'm gonna annotate the screen, okay? So we're gonna have blue annotations and green ones. Blue for what I'm doing, Doing green for what I'm thinking. Let's go. Okay, now if you'd never played the piano before and you watched someone improvising, you might think that their brain was on fire, that they were making decision after decision after decision. But that's not quite how it works. If you looked at the green annotations in the playthrough then, you'll see that I was thinking, not very much. There was quite a lot of high level stuff, but I wasn't making an endless string of decisions about the notes that I needed to play. Let me break down an example of what I'm talking about. Towards the end of that progression, there were two F7 chords next to each other. Now I didn't play them as straight F7 chords because this is jazz, I extended them and substituted them. So the first one, I think I played um, a rootless F13 voicing or something like that. And the second one, I played a tritone substitution. I used a B7 chord, okay? Let's not dig into the mechanics of that because what I really want to talk about is what happened in the right hand while well, I did something like this. And then I was back into the main flow of the progression. Now what happened there in the right hand was I played a whole tone scale. If you don't know what one is, it's pretty much what it says on the tin. It's a scale that just goes up in whole tones, in whole steps up the piano keyboard. Really quite common in jazz. Now what I said to myself there wasn't oh, right, you know, Bill, we're gonna play this note, then this note, then this note, then this note, then this note. I didn't do that. I said, I'm starting here, play a whole tone scale, bang. And because I've practiced whole tone scales in the past, my hand just took over. I didn't have to think about it. Now, this is so how so much of piano improvisation works. When you're improvising on the piano, all the individual little skills you've practiced in advance and they are embedded deep in what we call your procedural memory. We'll come back to that term in a second. So your conscious brain is like being, you know, the CEO, just making big decisions about what kind of sounds it wants to create and what kind of effect it wants next. It's a little bit like driving a car. When you're driving along and you want to turn left, you just say to yourself, left turn, here we go, and you turn. You don't mentally break down all the tasks that you need to do. You don't think, right, I'm going to turn left, I'm going to slow down, hit the brake a little bit, maybe change down the gear if, if I'm in a manual. I'm going to look in the mirror, then I'm going to signal, then I'm going to turn the wheel, turn, turn, turn. Now, I'm around the corner, I'm gonna, I'm gonna straighten the wheel out again. You don't do that, okay? Instead you think, I'm just gonna turn left. And all of the tasks that you need to do to do that are just automated. So a minute or two ago, I used the term procedural memory. Now your procedural memory is a bit of your brain where automated tasks are stored. So tasks that you have done so many times and practiced so thoroughly that you don't have to think about them. The bit of your brain that is kind of you that decides what to do, decides which tasks to activate, is your executive control, your executive function as it's sometimes called. And those two 
um, aspects of your brain work together when you're improvising. So your executive function says, right, next we're going to do a bit of this, and then a bit of this, and then a bit of this. And your procedural memory, where you've stored all this stuff, then executes the task. Now that has major practical implications for the way you practice. Because a lot of people, when they're trying to learn improvisation, try to do everything at once. They think, okay, I've got a B-flat chord now. Uh, what notes can I play over a B-flat chord? I guess some of the notes of B-flat pentatonic. Okay, I'll try this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Oh, now I've got a, um, an F diminished seven chord. Uh, what am I going to do next? So I can play this note, this note, this note. And they kind of overburden their brains. Okay. A much smarter, more efficient way to practice imp improvisation is to automate as much as possible. A really good place to start is with the left hand. So just play the left hand and practice playing the chords over and over, counting as you go. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's really important not to play them the same way every time, okay? You're not getting used to playing um, one single pattern all the time, rather you're getting used to playing these chords in a variety of different ways. What you can then begin to do is add stuff in the right. And there are various ways of getting started with improvisation that I've talked about in the past. And you know, a classic one is to start with one note and then two notes and so on and so forth. Once you get past that basic stage though, you'll find you'll make much faster progress if you've pre-learned some of the stuff you're going to do in the right hand. Practice noodling around until it's kind of automatic using the B flat major scale, the B flat pentatonic, some of the blues notes and so on. Don't get trapped into the kind of thinking, oh now I'm going to play this scale and that scale and this scale because what happens then is you end up with a kind of a disjointed mess. What you need to do is again store in your procedural memory knowledge of what sounds good where. Now that might be notes from the B flat major scale, it might be notes from the B flat major blues scale, it might be you know the odd blues note, it might be whatever. Okay, stuff that you have played around and learned and explored. Okay, I often on the channel talk about the benefits of, of just kind of having fun, of playing around, exploring, experimenting. And sometimes I think people don't take me seriously when I say that, but it is so important. Just sit down you know, play a B flat chord and see what you can do in the right hand over the top. Try any note and see how it sounds, okay? Get out of this mentality of which note am I allowed to play over which chord and instead start learning about what sounds good with, with particular chords and what doesn't, okay? That's a really important thing. And as you do that, then gradually you will find that little movements, little techniques get stored in your procedural memory. And as you start to improvise up to speed, you'll begin to pull them out kind of automatically. Okay, so hopefully Hopefully that's given you some kind of sense of how improvisation works at a mental level and also perhaps some new ways of approaching your own improvisation. Don't get tied into that think, 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 decision, decision, decision kind of model of practicing. Instead, practice the chunks, practice the little bits and learn to string them together. If you've enjoyed this, I think you're really going to enjoy my books and piano packs. I've added links to all of them in the description text below. They're great value and lots and lots of people have really enjoyed them. As well as those description text links, I'll also stick YouTube cards in the top right hand corner of the screen and probably an end screen card as well here. So hit that now to find out more about my books and I'll see you again next time. Take it easy. Goodbye.